choke on, engine on. Let's see if she'll do a one hand fire or is it going to pull back and tear my arm off? Hey tubers, welcome back for another adventure and today's adventure will be troubleshooting an all-terrain vehicle with a capacitive discharge ignition system that has no spark. And by the way, this discussion works for three-wheelers, two-wheelers, four-wheelers, to some extent cars, um, side-by-sides, the whole shoot and match. If you have a capacitive discharging ignition system, what I'm going to go through will help you troubleshoot it. And I'm going to start off really nice and simple so that people don't fall asleep, fall off their chairs, and wake up in the morning. So... Any capacitive discharge ignition system needs these four things. First of all, ground. Ground is the level of the bike, of the negative terminal on your battery. So the frame, the engine, and negative terminal of your battery should all be at ground. And you could do that. You take your volt ohm meter, put it to ohms or continuity, or if you have a light bulb and a battery, and you go around and you make sure all those things are all hooked together. They're all at the same potential. Your light bulb lights when you go in between any two of those items. Your ohm meter says as close to zero as possible. Your continuity gauge beeps. You're going to need power. AC power or 12 volts typically. An ignition primary spark coil. You have to hook to one side of the spark coil. And you need a pulse generator. So basically what happens between ground and power, you put it in there, this thing charges a capacitor up to a real high nice value. A pulse comes in on the pulse generator, sends out a big blast of electrons to the ignition coil that steps it up to a crazy high voltage and that high voltage shoots a spark. Thing goes around, resets between ground and power if it's AC, puts another big pulse out onto the capacitor in the CDI system, pulse generator hits and it fires again. And it does that over and over again. You have spark, you have spark at the right time and you're running. So as you have that in your mind, think about what could go wrong. Assuming your engine is sound, right, we have no surprises. It didn't jump timing. If it jumped timing, you'll probably have spark, but the pulse is at the wrong time and your engine won't start, right? Your pulse is at the wrong time, your spark is at the wrong time, and a lot of times it only slightly jumps out of time, and that's when you go and pull on the string and it tries to jerk your arm out of socket, or you go to kickstart it, and it th tries to throw you over the handlebars, or you turn it over electrically, and it goes, and then it really kicks back hard against the starter. On some of the older bikes, or some of the more worn, bikes, um, what happens is you actually strip out the starter gears. Let's assume your engine sound and you just have no spark. This machine has an AC capacitive discharge ignition system. That means it's powered by a nice sine wave that comes off the engine. And what you have is a magnet going by a coil that induces a current voltage follows <laughs> that current goes into your CDI once again charges up your capacitor and your pulse generator fires that off in addition normally AC CDI systems they have an on and off wire and a lot of times this wire does more than just turn on and off with the switch on the handlebars or the push button on the handlebars a lot of times it could be inhibited by if you left the machine in reverse and you try to start it normally it inhibits the starter but on some of them with a the recoil it'll also inhibit the spark right anyway 
So let's go through this system. Now that I spent all that time talking about ground, your engine, your frame, your battery, as you put your meter between them, your light between them, your con continuity gauge between them, they should be all hooked together. So what we're going to do to test out your CDI, why you have no spark for your CDI system, you're going to take the CDI out of socket. And in that case, when you look at the plug with the CDI missing, this is what you're looking at. And if you go around the back and check, you'll have green, which is ground. You'll have yellow and blue, which is where the pulse generator comes in. You'll have black and yellow, um, where the ignition coil hooks up. You'll have the on and off switch, and depending on if it's on, it's an open circuit, and if it's off, it's a short circuit, and you'll have power. In this case, it's AC, so you're actually going to have an ohm value. If this were a DC system, when you turn it on, there should be 12 volts there. Okay, um, between there and ground, obviously. So as you're going through this and the little discussion I just had, you have no spark. What do you want to check for? The first thing I would go for a DC ignition system is look right here. See if you have power to the CDI, right? Assuming you have power when you're hooked to the frame, make sure there's ground wire and power. Between those two, you have 12 volts for a DC CDI. In my case, I'm just going to hook here. I'm going to probe to the ground, make sure I have as close to zero ohms as possible. I'm going to probe here. It's going to come up to somewhere around 200 ohms. I'm going to poke here. On uh, these, it's somewhere around 30, but it could be as high as 150. I've seen, and they still throw a spark. And these here, you know, 10, 20 ohms, something like that. So anyway, let's go around the circle and see where the problem is. So at this point, I'm checking between ground, and by the way, with this Mickey Mouse hookup, I probably threw an ohm or two in there. And uh, then with this Mickey Mouse hookup, right, I got it plugged in here to what's the ground wire. See, it's green. Unfortunately, they painted it, but you can see the very edge is green. So I'm going between ground and green, and I'm getting two ohms. Close enough to zero, especially considering the Mickey Mouse hookup I have. Let's keep working our way down. Next is between ground and power. So, between ground and power, which in this case is, I'm uh, basically checking the resistance of the stator coil, comes in at exactly 200 ohms, right as expected, life is good. Next up, the on and off switch. The on and off switch has two values. If it's on, you can see that's basically infinity. And if I turn it to off, it goes to 4 ohms, 3 ohms. Virtually a short circuit. Once again, with the long leads, don't be surprised that it doesn't make it all the way to zero. So, good, good, good. Now comes the ignition coil. Well, for the ignition coil, I have an open circuit. The wires are hooked up, right? You can see the black and yellow right there. And I'm plugged into the black and yellow. And I got an open circuit. Hmm. Now life starts getting interesting. We seem to have found a problem. Let's go the one extra step just to make sure my testing is working. So, I'm between ground. I'm actually hooked to the engine right there and the pulse generator. It's coming up to 31 ohms, which is interesting because when I hook the meter up directly across here um, and hold the probes on there real well, I get 28. So it appears as if my setup is causing me 3 ohms. Not all that important. Most of these are go, no go. As you're probing around, right, you've got an open circuit here for the ignition coil. And now to troubleshoot what's going wrong with that. Not hard to do. We have the ignition coil with two wires on it. You see them right there. You see the green and you see the 
the black with the yellow stripe. So now we go from here to each one of these wires, ground, and then we go to the one with the black and yellow stripe, and we see which one is open. This is a piece of cake. Hmm. It doesn't seem to be clipped on all that well. Maybe that's the problem. Anyway, so um, I'm going to move this back to the green guy, and then we're going to put the other side on that green wire there and see if we're hooked up. So, between the engine and here, we got one ohm. So that tells me the continuity is good there. Now to go from here black yellow to there black yellow we'll see what we got so black yellow black yellow and I have two ohms so I had an open circuit and now I have continuity so I'm gonna wiggle things around clean up that terminal a little bit maybe it's just a little oxidation maybe the wires weren't on good I know this one's on good I'm just going to double check that and we'll go back to the plug and see if continuity came back. We'll plug a CDI in, we'll see if the spark came back, and hopefully all is good. So I cleaned it up with this little piece of sandpaper and once again I put it back on and this is going from here to ground and I'm seeing two ohms and typically the primaries are pretty low so that's that's really pretty good also anyway now that I have continuity through my system let's uh, let's give this thing a quick little hoot of starting fluid and see if we uh, we can not have it start and run on its own ignition system right no portable CDI so you guys remembered this thing started right up on the portable CDI. Let's see how it does on its own CDI. I'm going to cheat a little bit. Just a hoot will do you. So we did that. Choke on. Engine on. Let's see if she'll do a one hand fire. Or is it going to pull back and tear my arm off. Well, once again, this is a cold start, so there you go. I would say, like, fixed. actually running even a little better than it did on the uh, on the portable CDI. There's a reason for that. You have an advance here and you have an advance on the uh, portable CDI or basically it gets rid of the uh, um, delay. So if you subtract the delay in the portable CDI and you subtract that delay, it kind of gets things a little, little too far out front. But anyhow, yeah, it still smokes. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I need you to uh, keep your feet down, your heads up, and I need you to get out and enjoy each and every day. CDI is fixed. Smoking, not so much.